went to, I guess it was a six or seven month helicopter school in Texas uh, in nine days and graduated. And I went back to the general and I said, General, you're looking at the Air Force's newest helicopter pilot. He said, Finn, that's impossible. You've been gone nine days. I said, here's my diploma. He said, well, I don't believe it. He said, we were on Randolph Air Force Base and we were the headquarters there, but the general I worked for, I had a, a brigadier general working for him that, that ran Randolph Air Force Base. He said, Willie Person has, an air, has a helicopter down there and he needs to go to Williams Air Force Base in Phoenix. Go ferry the airplane out there for him. We'll, we'll find out if you can fly a helicopter. Now, this was a little H-13G, had 43 gallons of fuel, and uh, didn't have any doors on it. And uh, when, when you go west, you always go against the wind. And this airplane had a top speed of about 60 miles an hour. And if you, if you got a 20 mile headwind, now you're going 40 miles an hour, and Phoenix is eight, nine hundred miles away. I don't know how far it was, but it was across two or three states. And so I followed the highway out there. When I needed fuel, I'd, I'd land at a gas station and I'd pull a rotor around so it went straight and I'd push the airplane up and fill, put 43 gallons of fuel in my airplane, uh, pay them out of my pocket and push the airplane back, start it up. And, and I did that a few times get, getting to Williams Air Force Base. But, and, and that's when I learned to fly a helicopter on that trip. And I was a hero in my own mind, you know. <laughs> well, you were solving a problem. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. If, when, you, when, you, when you come to a problem and you don't know whether you can handle it or not, my philosophy was just to assault it. Just charge, you know. Pr pretend like you know what you're doing. Any part of some is better than no part of any.